Welcome to the closing ceremony for the Science Institute. To the parents, we're privileged to have been trusted with your students this week. To the friends and families, you should be inspired by the intensity of learning, the meaningfulness of their work, and understanding that they will take away from these institutes. To the candidate for the title of Fellow of the Science Institute, we say you have earned the right to be called a fellow. I am Paula Farnell. I am the Sturgeon City Director and the Director of these institutes. I would also like to recognize Dr. Don Herring, who is the Chair of the Sturgeon City Board of Directors, and Mr. Glenn Hargett, who is our Assistant City Manager, and he is going to come up and um, give you guys a few brief words. Good morning. On behalf of the mayor and council, we appreciate that you are here today. And thank you for entrusting your children, your, parents, your students with us this week for this part of the Sturgeon City Institute. To the students and candidates for fellow, we say thank you for your attention and thank you for your dedication. To the guides, the drivers, all the people who help make this to work, our interns, all those type of people, we say also thank you and thank you for your hours of dedication to this project. This is more than just a summer program. You notice we don't call it a camp. It's called an institute because it's all about learning. It's learning about our community. It's learning about what it is that makes this community unique too. That river out there basically begins and ends in Jacksonville, in Onslow County rather, and as it meanders through Jacksonville, we live the results of when it was not cared for, when stewardship of the river was thought of as a place where just we could discharge waste and there was commercial fishing and other things, but it all degraded and went away. And you'll hear more of the story about how this community decided at this dais that they wanted to make a moral responsibility to help clean up that river. And the reflect of it was having young people who wanted to come out and volunteer with the scientists to help do the programs and to make those efforts um, to advance in such a state that the river would be cleaned up. And that's the legacy of that, because we hope they will become future stewards of our river to carry on to know that man messed it up, man fixed it, let's don't let it happen again. So thank you all for this week, and on behalf again as the mayor and the city council of Jacksonville that fund this program and offer it at no charge to you students, we say we give our great appreciation for your attention this week, and now we turn it back over now to the, to the institute leadership and the directors. We just want to take a brief moment to mention the other institutes that are happening this week. We have the New Generation Leaders Program, which seeks to prepare the next generation of leaders with special tools to be good citizens and hopefully be a valuable part of the city of Jacksonville. The Science Academy takes deeper views of science. They have studied marine biology and engineering this week. And the Public Safety Institute learns what it's like to be a Jacksonville police officer and a member of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. Those participating in the Science Institute are eligible to consider these other institutes next summer when they will be rising sophomores. So please note that these programs will take place June 18th through the 22nd of 2018. So keep an eye out for more information on enrolling your students for next year. We're here as a result of a vision. Mr. Hargett mentioned things that have happened in our past. We have a vision that the city of Jacksonville can be a better place. This is a commitment by the elected leaders of our city and a desire to inspire young people to return to our community or stay here after their education. For 40 years, the city and others discharged their wastewater into the New River. And in 1995, some 23 million gallons of waste untreated hog waste were spilled into the New River. Scientists fear that there would be massive fish kills and devastation, but this did not happen because the river was already so degraded. That was our wake-up call to the citizens and to our city and to our elected officials to take the river back. And they wanted to use the river for recreation and fishing and as a place of pride. Fortunately, the city leaders had previously elected to build an environmentally friendly wastewater treatment plant that used treated wastewater to sustain a tree farm. And in 1998, they no longer discharged into the river. The word moral obligation, the words, excuse me, were used by the city leaders when they pledged to help clean up Wilson Bay, 
using oysters, aeration, restored wetlands, and stormwater mitigation. The project was a wonderful success, and during the first Surgeon City Institute 19 years ago, a student found the first signs of life in the bay as a result of this work. Now, the council has committed to making the Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center a tangible connection to our stewardship of the New River. And I will talk a little bit more about some of the details of that project later on in this presentation. But such is the stewardship, stewardship connection, excuse me, that Sturgeon City brings to our community that for many years, there were actions that degraded our river and there was community action that called to restore the river that we must never forget what has occurred and that it will not be repeated again. These institutes carry forth the promise of stewardship, education of our community, action in preparing young people for leadership. So now we present the Sturgeon City Institutes. And we have wanted to share with you guys where things have been documented this week. So the students have been posting their adventures. Um, they've been documented through our media services group as well as through the students directly. And some of the documentation is available on our blog, which you can get to at WordPress slash Sturgeon City. And things have also been documented on Flickr this week. All of the photos are there. Thousands of photos are there from past institutes from many years of the program. And you can also follow us at our website, which is SturgeonCity.org, or watch on G10. Um, this graduation ceremony today is being done on Facebook Live, is also being recorded, and will be available this weekend on YouTube and G10. So if you would like to go back and be able to watch that, that's available as well. So now we're going to begin our recognition of our Sturgeon City Science Institute members. Science is about observation and study. Our observation is that you're now in a unique group. You're part of the class of 2017 of the Sturgeon City Science Institute, part of a select group of students selected to be part of this institute. Someone thought you had something special. Someone thought you had skills that could be fostered and grown. And you, obviously, are part of a group who took some initiative of your own to be here with us this week. You are a special group. To the candidates for the title of fellows, when we began the institute, we offered that you would have competent people as a part of this institute. I now offer you one of them to you that has traveled with you on your journey here. Ms. Pat Donovan Potts, the stormwater manager for the city of Jacksonville. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I've been very fortunate to uh, have been part of these institutes since day one and also as part of the cleanup of the river since day one. So there's a lot of history here and it still amazes me that this is year 18 that I've graduated, we've graduated 18 years worth of Science Institute kids. I started when I was two, just y'all know. Um, so I aged very well. The river, you know, aged me very well. So. Just in case you didn't know, what we did this week with, with these wonderful students, and gosh, what a great group of students they were, they were this week. No, no complaining. Anytime we asked them to do something, they were like, sure. We we're like, who are these kids and where did they come from? Can we have more, please? They actually um, got to do science hands-on. Instead of learning about science from a book, we took them out into the field. We took them to different habitats. And each habitat had all kinds of things to offer. So on Monday, they went to Land App, our wonderful land application plant, which Jill runs our lab, and her grandson is part of our program. I have the joy of having most of our employees, city employees, sending their kids and now their grandkids. So, mm. We're getting a little older. Um, through the program, that's how great a program it is. But they got to visit Land at, which is 7,000 acres of, of forest, where we're treating the waste now. Instead of polluting a river, we're now growing a forest, a much better use with the city of Jacksonville. They actually went to a lily pond, a natural lily pond there. They got to learn about the forest in succession. Tuesday, if you didn't know, they came home wet and muddy because we put them in the intercoastal waterway, we put them in a maritime forest, and we put them out at the beach. We jogged the rain events everywhere. Um, it sort of went around us. 
Uh, the Lord blessed us that day. On Wednesday, we had a whole round robin of places for them to go and things to see. Yes, they really did get to hold a snake on Wednesday, uh, as well as dead things with the comparative anatomy lab, as well as my favorite topic, stormwater drainage. They got to be engineers and build their own little drainage system. And then on Thursday, they got wet and muddy again because uh, some of them turned over in canoes, which is fine, and don't panic. The alligator went down every time a canoe rolled, just, just so you know. And they also got to go out on the boat and do water quality. And then, boom, we're already here at Friday, and I go, wait, wait, it was just Monday. So these kids were just enjoying every single minute of it, and I'm very proud of them. But in order for this week to have gone smoothly, um, there were a lot of players that, that helped make it go through. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, call all of the guides. They're not really teachers. They were guides because they were pals and mentors and friends, as well as teachers all rolled into one. And then I've got some staff that I'm going to introduce, and we'll thank them all at once. So in charge of the Science Institute, if Miss Julie Bell will come forward, with her this year was Brandon Dilliman with the Earth. Kim Lilly ran the moon group with Colin, who unfortunately is not with us right now. I'll stay right there. He had to go to a wedding. You know how these weekend things are. And then if I can get, my gosh, my wonderful staff, the stormwater water quality staff up here, if I can have Peter and Aaron and Mary and Audrey, please. Y'all know I love you, right? <laughs> so, for y'all, please don't smack on the candy cane the first thing. Otherwise, you're going to have to share. <laughs> Guys, these are the people that helped everything run smoothly this week. They got them where they were supposed to go. The staff was at, we, trust me, we were at work every morning at 6.30, getting all of the equipment together, packed for the students to use. Then at the end of the day, everything was cleaned and repacked. So you know, 4.30 comes 30 early every day this week. So please help me thank these people. They were instrumental. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we'll pull the moon group up. So if Miss Kim can come forward, she's going to introduce the moon group for you, and you're going to see their presentations. All right, I just want to say that um, Mr. Stoneham and I thoroughly enjoyed working with this group. They were definitely an inquisitive and observant group. Um, they also recorded all kinds of data in their field guides, and we really enjoyed the week with them. So without further ado, we'll let them go ahead and begin their presentation. Joe Aruz. Cameron Atkinson. Eric Green. Russell Milligan. Cameron Davis. Jackson Parker. Megan Houchins. Tamara Waters. Leilani Ruiz. Good morning, everyone. We are the Moon Group, and our presentation will express our findings in relation to the animals that we encountered during our week at Sturgeon City Science Institutes. We were excited to observe and interact with many different animals within various habitats, such as Onzo Beach, Wilson Bay, and other local areas. We learned that the habitat the wildlife lived in the habitat the wildlife lived in influenced its adaptations in order to survive. While we were out exploring, we used several different types of nets to capture and release um, different animals. There were many different species that we saw and probably even more that we didn't. The different animals had adapted over centuries to survive and thrive in their habitats, which we are destroying and thus killing them. The areas we visited were gorgeous, but were obviously being destroyed by human touch. 
it's vital that we preserve and protect these ecosystems because that we even because even we rely on them and they certainly rely on us. Many of the animals we saw here have grown, grown adaptations to help them survive, such as the mucous membrane on on fish scales to protect to protect it from pathogens, or or how our tortillas have adapted to be fully translucent in water, making it making it pretty much invisible in the wa water, or or even how how flat under hat have adapted to be a completely flat and camouflage perfectly a long bottom, making them uh, um, unable to be seen by predators and to also allow them to ambush prey. Among the organisms we saw, there were several organisms like baby barracuda, pinfish, pompino, pink and brown shrimp, bay anchovies, American eels, tortolas, mullet, coquina, spot, mussels, clams, oysters, mole crabs, blue crabs, fiddler crabs, sea crabs, and flounder. Then on the last day, we saw an alligator in Wilson Bay while canoeing. But we didn't just see saltwater organisms. We saw many freshwater organisms, too. Some examples were minnows, tadpoles, crawfish, and mosquito fish, and maybe even more that we could have seen but they wouldn't be alive now without all, without all the algae, or they'd just be eaten by predators. In these environments, we found many aquatic animals, but we also found some land animals, including toads, a box turtle, seagulls, an owl, a rat snake, ants, carpenter bees, june bugs, uh, a few osprey, and more. One of the reasons these organisms were able to thrive in these habitats is because they were part of a terrestrial and marine food web connection. An example of a terrestrial and marine food web connection would be an osprey we observed diving into the water after a fish. In conclusion, we observed great biodiversity in the different ecosystems we visited, including many different birds, sea life, and insects. Overall, we discovered that these organisms depend on the environment they live in because over time they have adapted to their niche in their ecosystem. It was a truly beautiful experience and we thank the Sturgeon City Science Institute for giving us the opportunity to learn so much. After all, omnem pretiosam animam, or all life is precious. Thank you. So at this time, we will present them with their certificates. Um, this first one is for Joe Arus. Come on over. The next one is for Cameron Atkinson. Cameron Davis. Eric Green. Megan Houchins. Russell Milligan, Jackson Parker, Leilani Rios, and Tamara Waters. As you can see again, um, what an incredible group, and we'll just give them one more round of applause as they have the seat. <laughs> Up next, we'll have the Earth Group. led by the infamous Miss Julie Bale and Brandon. What a great week we have had um, with all of the students. We got on the bus a lot of times. We carried those bins a lot of different places. We took data. Their field guides are as they should be, wet and dirty and messed up because they were used. And it didn't just stay pristine in their backpacks that they drug along with them. They were used and they documented and took a lot of notes and saw a lot of really um, interesting organisms this week. So we're going to let them present on water quality. Let them take it over. Um, hello, my name is Cameron Griffin. This is the Earth Group from the Sturgeon City Science Institute. And today we're going to be talking about water quality. 
My name is Carl Benson. My name is Devin Gardner. My name is Caden Curl. My name is Brianna Ryan. My name is Shaylin Drafalda. My name is Colin Davis. My name is Will Honeycutt. And I'm Isis Rios. Our purpose for this week was to investigate the water quality at various sites in Onzo County. Our first site was Land Applications Freshwater Lily Pond. The water quality here was adequate. There was a high rate of biodiversity as well as good pH just above neutral and a large amount of nitrates in this eutrophic environment. The second day, we explored the intercoastal waterway on Camp Lejeune. The, wall the water quality there was fair. pH was 7.94, which was slightly, slightly more neutral than the lily pond. Salinity was 31.2 parts per thousand, making it almost as salty as the ocean. Nitrates were fairly low at 5 parts per million. D dissolved oxygen was high at 95.4%. The intercoastal waterway was highly turbid and possibly toxic from passing boats, military trading, and training, and other recreational activities. The second site we went to on the second day was the Onslow Beach on Camp Lejeune. The water quality was moderate considering how harsh the environment was. Thus, there was not much biodiversity in the intertidal zone, which was where we got our water samples from. The organisms in this re region have adapted to surviving on the hot, harsh sand or being in the cool water with crashing waves. The salinity was 34 parts per thousand, which was slightly lower than the average open ocean salinity, probably because of it raining recently that day and earlier that week. Due to this, the water quality was not as good as it could have been if we went to the neuritic zone, which is farther out to sea. For the fourth site we visited, we traveled to Sturgeon City Salt Marsh, and the water quality here was very balanced. The water was highly turbid, which was probably because we were kicking around the water with our waders or because of previous weather, considering it had rained the night prior. This was brackish water that we were testing, and the salinity was 6.1 parts per thousand. The pH was a solid 8, and the nitrates were at 5 parts per million. The biodiversity here was very high, including three different types of Spartina, I think I pronounced it correctly, which is a type of grass, and there is a big variety of marine ecosystems, I mean, marine organisms. We ended up doing the same test at Boardwalk, and we found that our findings were the same. Last site we explored was Wilson Bay in all of its aspects. We tested water at two different locations in two different depths. The dissolved oxygen at the Wilson Bay Inlet at the top was 8.55 milligrams per liter. At the bottom, it was 5.18 milligrams per liter. It was lower than the center of the Wilson Bay, which was 10.05 milligrams per liter at the top and 7.34 milligrams per liter at the bottom. For, at the top for both locations is higher because of wind and turbulence mixing the water and creating more oxygen in the water surface. The temperature here was cooler at the bottom because it was more dense and in the inlet, which is under the bridge, we found that it was even colder because of the shade that the bridge did provide. We also found that there is a lot more salinity at the bottom considering that salt does sink and this caused for a greater conductivity closer to the bottom. At the beginning of this week, we watched a presentation in this room on the Wilson Bay Initiative. This presentation, this presentation was basically on how Wilson Bay used to be a water treatment center, and all wastewater was discharged into Wilson Bay. This caused this water to be very dirty and had an increase in bacteria and nitrates and pH, and the water was not good for fish nor for recreational use. So. Jacksonville's community, we decided to do something about it. What we did was we took oysters and we used aeration processes and we were finally able to restore the water to how it was before and was able to fish and for recreational and commercial uses. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our first certificate is for Carl Benson, Caden Carell, Colin Davis, Devin Gardner, 
Shailen Grifaldo. Cameron Griffin. Mommy. Will Honeycutt. Mommy. Isis Rios. Brianna Ryan. And we want to recognize Hunter Rutlinger, who could not be here with us today, but Mr. Dillon will have him in class next year, so he'll, he'll be getting his certificate too. Thank you for being such a great group and trudging everywhere. We ask you to go and being so amiable and despite the weather. Good job. <laughs> next, uh, Paula will be coming up to take us to the next part of our presentation. Thank you guys so much. <clears throat> and again, thank you so much to the guys who work with us, as well as our lovely stormwater staff, Pat Donovan Potts and her amazing team who make this week such a great success and so much fun for the kids. You guys had fun, right? You had fun too? Okay, that's an important part. We like for you to learn, but we like for you to have fun. Let's just give one more round of applause to this group as well as the staff. Thank you guys. And so speaking about some of the fun that these guys have been going through this week, um, we are actually now going to give you guys a little brief video of some of the things that happened this week with our students. The goal of Surgeon City is to help students and the public learn basically from the past mistakes that were made. We operate at the former wastewater treatment plant for the city of Jacksonville, which had formerly polluted Wilson Bay, and restoration and cleanup efforts were done, and so now the main goal is to continue those efforts, as well as to teach people about our past mistakes so that they will not make the same mistakes again in the future. that the kids have a good time. I mean, we really do want them to make friends and enjoy themselves. It is their summer break, but it's also about learning, and we want them to be able to learn some of the history of this area, as well as to learn some science, learn about the environment, and really get out there hands-on, and hopefully get interested in science. introduction um, when we did a tour of the public safety building to include the fire department they got to see the evidence room um, the records department they went upstairs and they got to see the, the dispatch center which is like the hub of the, everything every time you call that's that's who you speak to is the men and women that work up there and they were in that room and whether they control the traffic lights and they can view the tra traffic cameras and they can see real time you know what's going on and they went over to the fire section uh, and the fire department gave us a really good tour of their facility uh, from everything and it, it explained all the equipment. They did a fantastic job with, with each of the vehicles that they explained and all the tools that are on them. Um, and from there we went to the jail, uh, which I think was their favorite part of yesterday. And this morning we're doing traffic stops. Every officer, almost no matter what division they're in, they do traffic stops. It's one of our most common uh, things that we do. I hope they get a better understanding of, of who we are and what we do. We're people. You know, um, we're not just there to give you tickets. We're not just there to arrest you. Because I think that's the most important thing. Everybody sees what we do. They don't really know why we do it. So this is just our chance to explain why we do it. Right now we're making 
using a hydraulic powered robot and it's really fun to learn how to use specific supplies that I probably haven't worked with before, like syringes to power a robot, which is pretty cool. I like the fact that um, Mr. Marshall, he's very energetic and exciting. I would recommend the Engineering Institute to anyone who wants to learn something, who wants to have fun, who wants to be able to be creative and be there in person. generation leaders is just getting the students to work together and learn new things about their community and about themselves, how they can be leaders in the community and when they go off to college. So we do community service, networking with city officials, tours in different community places. It's always great to see some of the same faces come back. We have a lot of kids that do the program three, four, five years in a row, depending how long they keep coming back with us. So throughout the past five years, I've met many, many people, and some of them I only see during Surgeon City, which is a blessing and a curse at the same time because they're such amazing people. I wish we had like an education camp, like future educators of America, like teachers how to teach to be training and all that kind of stuff. I probably want a new institute to be creative arts because I'm a big writer, music, art fan. An institute just for like just creating things, not just robots, but maybe like sculptures or things like that, creative arts. Like more like environmental biology, like if they haven't done that already. I personally am an author and I look for camps for writing and I can never find them. I think that would be really cool be able to have a camp like that. And again, a quick thank you to our amazing media team. Um, they have a group of interns and other staff that um, work tirelessly many, many hours with us this week, following us around everywhere that we get to go, um, and also help to actually put those videos together for us. So thank you again for documenting all of that with us. I'm going to go on and give um, a brief presentation here. Um, a little bit about the future of Sturgeon City. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware, um, we are working towards building our new Sturgeon City Environmental Education Center. I briefly mentioned that at the beginning of this presentation. And um, actually to be, to be truthful about the current state of affairs, the architectural documents are actually out to bid as we speak. Um, so hopefully you'll be hearing some more news about that in the coming weeks and coming months. Um, so I'm going to just show you a few things. Keep in mind all of these drawings and images you're seeing today are purely conceptual at this point. We do have plans that are out, but of course, depending what comes back with the contractors and all of that, um, you know, we'll update folks as we know more. Essentially what this is going to be um, is a new building. If you're familiar with our site, it's going to go kind of um, on the other side of what I call the clarifier tanks. There's sort of a large gravel area there for the students that were down there this week. You know kind of where I'm talking about. And it's going to um, provide about 7,000 more square feet of programming space for us. You're seeing here the full room open with a capacity between four and 500 people um, max. And there's also going to be folding walls that we're able to use to divide this into different space. You can run multiple events and programs at a time. Right now, we're very space limited. We operate out of the old administration building for the water treatment plant and a small outbuilding called our learning center and with outdoor space. So we're limited by the weather, as you guys learned about some this week with your own adventures, which most kids do great with it, thankfully. But when we do a lot of other programs throughout the year, field trips and things like that as well, it's a little difficult sometimes to coordinate that. 
And again, these are all just conceptual things, but this will be kind of the icon. You know, this has always been the future dream. We talked about when the conversations were first had, actually back all the way back in 2000, um, about building this facility up and really making it a destination for people. And so this has been in the works for many years. And hopefully with the future idea that some of those clarifiers and other areas out there will be repurposed um, into exhibit space and have people down there. We've been thankful to have these Sturgeon City Institutes down there year after year and now some of our other programs throughout the school year as well and our other summer camps. But we're hoping to really have people there on a daily basis. And potential possible reuse of some of the spaces to tell our story, to tell the history of what was done here, the cleanup efforts, to memorialize the fact that the city and the local citizens took responsibility for that and chose to do the right thing and to put in all the efforts that have gone on for, um, you know, what, almost 20 years now to clean up the bay and the river. So this is actually some imagery of a potential um, build out of our former bio tower as a walk-in exhibit space. Um, still very conceptual and dreaming big at this point, um, but one thing that's been talked about over the years potential to have platforming on top. Those of you that got the chance to walk up there this year um, know this will take a lot of work, but um, it's one of those things that we're, we like to dream big. And um, several years ago at that very site, one of our past sets of Institute students are here making the lovely shape of a sturgeon. Um, this was when the nonprofit actually passed on the first check um, back to the city. We were lucky enough to have a partnership with the city of Jacksonville and with the Tourism Development Authority um, for Jacksonville to be able to make this project a reality. And um, this was the day that we passed on our first check as our portion back from the nonprofit to pay towards this project. And so since we love our lovely sturgeon here, we had our students help make this, this gorgeous shape to memorialize that day for us. And here we are ready to start moving forward with hopefully construction here in the next few months. And again, you know, just a reminder that we keep talking about sturgeon a lot, right? Some of you have heard this story several times maybe, or a couple times this week at least, um, about why we talk about sturgeon. But it's all about taking environmental action and a commitment to advanced learning and stewardship. The answer is simple. Sturgeon are bottom feeders. They once traveled freely up the New River to spawn. But when the incredible pollution produced a thick layer of sludge in the bottom of the river, no sturgeon could deal with that. The cleanup of the river has been incredibly successful, but it's not over. It's not over until sturgeon return in the numbers that we used to see. That is our ultimate goal, to bring back this keystone species. They're also a very visible species because they're sort of prehistoric. They still look the same as they have for basically millions of years. They're very recognizable. And that's a symbol of our dedication to how long we plan to be a part of this project. We're in this for the long haul. We want to make this a place of pride for everyone and to tell the story of what was done and how everyone took part and cleaned up and what a great community we've got. It's really a testament to Jacksonville and Onslow County that people like your students keep coming out to be a part of our programs and a part of our cleanup efforts and want to be valuable members of our community. And there are many different varieties of sturgeon, like the different types of our institutes, and we seek to work to welcome all into our community. We want to spread the message that the city cares about youth, that we want these young people to be a part of our city, and that we want them to be prepared to assume our, to assume our roles, the roles of leadership in this community in the future. And clearly, one of the superb ways of being involved is the Jacksonville Youth Council. This was actually formed as a partnership with the Onslow County School Board in 1998 as a voice for young people in our community, and it's provided a method to allow the practice of governance, and more importantly, self-development. And here to speak to you a little bit about Jacksonville Youth Council are Christina Freeman, Evangeline Padilla, Paula L. Alfie, and Taylor Rudder. Hello, my name is Christina Freeman, and I just recently graduated from Jacksonville High School. And this is my fourth and sadly my last year representing the Jacksonville Youth Council. Throughout the duration of the past year, I held the recorder seat for JYC. The Jacksonville Youth Council has equipped myself with numerous skills, public speaking even being on this list. This is my last time being a representative of the Jacksonville Youth Council as an officer. However, JYC has instilled a perennial love for my community 
as a goal for the council, making leaving Jacksonville after education an option, not a requirement. Hey y'all, my name is Taylor Rudder. After being in the council for two years, I now hold the White Oak Chair. Jacksonville Youth Council elects their own officers every year, and this makes them, uh, having a voice obtainable. This group has allowed myself to grow personally through National Day of Service, college tours, and youth summits. The people that stand here with me can attest to the importance of JYC when it comes to involvement with the community. Hello, my name is Hala Alalfi, and this is my first year being a part of the council. Currently, I am a member of the Youth Council. Many people have asked, what is the person, pur purpose of the Jacksonville Youth Council? While there are many, the most prominent one is to give the youth a voice. Through involvement with the community and hosting regular meetings, JYC promotes affinity for the love of Jacksonville. Hey, my name is Evangeline Pitti, and this is my first year of being a part of Jacksonville Youth Council. Currently, oh wait, with your help, we can make a greater difference in our community. If you want to join, then please contact site coordinator Lily Gray to find out about meetings, programs, and event dates at lgray at jacksonvillenc.gov or 910-938-5286. Be sure to check out the Jacksonville Youth Council on Facebook. So these lovely ladies would love to chat with anyone who's interested in joining Youth Council. But thank you, Evangeline, for also giving information for how to contact Lily if you guys are interested in joining. And you saw that lovely photo. That was a picture of our Youth Center, which is right across the street here. So also keep an eye on that. Um, there's some other great events that take place over there, as well as being a meeting place for the Youth Council. So with that, we have one of the final acts for our ceremony. As a fellow, you are a member of a learned society. For the Science Institute candidates, we told you that at the end of our journey, our quest for knowledge, those who complete the trip will be given the title of fellow. You'll be part of a special group, a learned society. And now we will administer the oath for the title of fellow. This is the fun part. You guys get to join me. So if I can please have the Science Institute stand. Everybody stand and put your stuff in your chair. And what you're going to do is we're going to uh, cite an oath. So I'll say it line by line and you repeat after me. Everybody put up your right hand because I want to make sure this is ingrained into you forever, right? Remember the starfish story I gave on Monday? This is the follow-up. Okay, I'm going to say I, and then I'm going to say state your name, but don't say state your name. Say Russell, Eric, Joe, state your name, okay? All right, y'all ready? I state your name, accept the challenge, I, I will accept the challenge of the Sturgeon City Science Institute, Institute. Of the Sturgeon City Science Institute. To, help others to help others appreciate our environment. To help, others to help others share my knowledge, share my knowledge about, our habitat, about our habitat, to inspire others to, inspire others, to, care, for things, to care for the living things around us, and to continue my knowledge. And to continue my knowledge. This, I do, this I do as a fellow of the Sturgeon City, of the of the Sturgeon City. Science Institute. Remember, I'm holding you to it. Thank you. The time has now come to close the 2017 Science Institute. The successes of any edition of these institutes is not measured today, but in the future, when these participants assume our roles and become leaders, good citizens, and contribute to the success of their community. It is our hope that they will join in this community and they will contribute, but that wherever they go, whatever they become, our hope is that they know this community cared about them, and we sought to nurture and lead them, and that we have a place for them here. We encourage the participants to participate in the activities planned this summer at the Jacksonville Youth Council's Youth Center, and that they become involved in the programs at Sturgeon City, that they consider an invitation to be active in the Jacksonville Youth Council in whatever they do, that with pride they wear their Sturgeon City shirts and display to all their participation 
in these programs. Therefore, with all the participants acknowledged, with a review of the work of the institutes, and with documentation made available, I therefore declare the 2017 Sturgeon City Science Institutes adjourned. <laughs>